Good morning. First, let me give honor and praise to God for this opportunity to speak to the press regarding the eradication of gun violence in the United States. I am the Reverend Dr. J. Herbert Nelson, Director of the Presbyterian Church USA, Office of Public Witness here in Washington, D.C. I represent two million members of our denomination. I also represent today the National Council of Churches, which includes 37 Christian denominations and over 100,000 churches, which includes 45 million persons in membership. Our collective presence of interfaith leaders gathered here today is a witness to our belief in the need for leaders to bind themselves together on both national and local levels. We are aware that pressure from gun lobby and gun owners continues to mount around this issue. But we believe the political leaders in Washington can resolve this problem and achieve meaningful gun reform if only they have the will. As we celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on his birthday today, it is imperative for us to be reminders that he was a man who advocated for peace and justice. I am convinced that if he were here today, this issue would be the priority of his leadership. In the United States today, since 1997, we are witnessing gun deaths of more than 30,000 persons per year. From the Revolutionary War in 1775 to the Persian Gulf War in 1991, which totaled 116 years, there were 650,858 persons killed in combat. In 18 years, from 1979 to 1997, we have experienced 651,697 deaths by guns. There were 839 more persons killed by guns during this 18-year period in the United States than in 116 years of foreign wars involving the United States. No longer can faith lobbyists whose motivations are driven by a false standard of profit and power continue to lead this discussion. We stand today on the premise that faith does have something to say about the life and death and therefore it is imperative that we declare that our Creator affirms the abundant life while giving leadership to those of us who will challenge the false choice between guns and freedom. We have gathered to call for, one, a ban on all assault weapons. These are weapons of war and there is no reason for common citizens to purchase or possess them. As many have said, we do not use an AK-47 to hunt deer. Therefore, we are calling for the reinstatement of the assault weapons ban, which lapsed in 2004. Secondly, we are calling for universal background checks. Presently, there is no federal provision for background checks in some states that do not require them at all. Therefore, persons that are mentally ill or do not know how to fire a gun or possess criminal records can make gun purchases. And thirdly, gun trafficking should be made a federal crime. Currently, prosecutions only happen through a law that prohibits selling guns without a federal license, which carries the same punishment as trafficking of chicken, chicken or livestock. We must empower law enforcement to investigate and per prosecute straw purchases, gun traffickers, and their entire criminal networks. We must not minimize the struggle of families who mourn the loss of the children and teachers killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Their new, the Newtown community tragedy brought this issue of gun violence to the forefront in the public debate. However, it is a greater tragedy that we live in a culture of violence that self-perpetuates and makes gun violence acceptable. According to one journalist each evening on the 11 o'clock news, Many television stations wait until two or three minutes before the broadcast to determine the lead story because they are waiting for the possibility of a late night shooting. The common term in media for this is if it bleeds, it leads. Newtown is representative of a long list of tragic community killings through gun violence. Our purpose here today is to declare that our faith perspectives and holy books call us first and foremost to love one another, 
not protect ourselves against one another. Mm. In inner city and some rural communities today, the criminal element connected to guns is rampant due to a lack of economic opportunity, dismal job prospects, low wages, and historic flawed and failing public education. Without opportunities, children are forced to choose gangs, guns, and incarceration over graduation. All of these dismal realities of community life are perfect for drug trafficking, prostitution, and other public safety issues stemming from illegal activities. They create an environment for guns to neutralize the effects among criminals in a community. If the real truth is exposed, we would realize that none of us are safe in this country. Shopping malls, political rallies, temples, mosques, churches, schools, including college campuses, and a host of other public venues are all potential sites for gun violence at any given time. The challenge of eradicating gun violence is that there must be a change of heart and spirit in our nation. The issue of creating peace for our nation is tied to justice and how we treat our neighbors and whether each person has an opportunity for economic livelihood. If Dr. King were alive today, he would remind us that the United States is a great nation when it measures its greatness on its moral and ethical actions. Let us be first in law, he would declare. Guns must be brought under tighter legislative restrictions for the purposes of saving lives and restoring the integrity of our commitment to promote life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We stand together because we know beyond all else that God is love. Let us love one another and bind ourselves together to challenge the onslaught of gun violence in our nation. Tell Congress and our president to pass legislation that will tighten gun laws in this country. God is love. Yeah.